Hey, let us talk about history again, or rather mythology this time. Today, we are talking about Edido of Carthago. The story of Dido, Queen of Carthago, is like most legends, full of drama, intrigue, and a bit of deception. But before we dive into this journey, please like this video and hit the subscribe button. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. It's a tale that's been passed down to Roman historians and later made famous by the poet Virgil in his epic. The Aeneid, but Dido's life didn't start in Carthage. It began in the Phoenician kingdom of Tyre, modern-day Lebanon, and her real name, Alusa. But later, she became known as Dido, which means wanderer. What a nice name! Before her father, King Martin of Tudor, passed away around 800 BC. He thought it would be smart for his kids to rule together. He figured sharing power between Alusa and her brother Bucmalion would work out. Well, what do you expect? It didn't. Bucmalion, who was recognized as the real ruler because he was male, left Alusa with little authority. She was married to a wealthy uncle, Zucaeus. The high priest of Malquat, but here's where things get dark. Pygmalion, always scheming, wanted it well for himself, so he had Zacchaeus murdered. Yeah, right in the temple. But he didn't tell Alusa right away. Instead, he kept feeding her lies about her husband's fates. Things went south. When Zacchaeus goes to visit Alusa one night, yeah, a ghostly wizard right there, he revealed that her own brother had killed him, and warned her to flee, telling her where his hidden treasure was. And with that, Alusa decided it was time to leave Tyre and her dangerous brother behind. She gathered her loyal followers and set sail. Taking, of course, the treasure with her, and by the way, that's where she got the nickname Dido or Wanderer. After a stopover in Cyprus, Dido and her crew eventually reached the shores of North Africa, where they founded Carthage. There's this cool little legend about how she got the land. She made a deal with the local king, Iarvas. For as much land as she could cover with an ox hide, sneaky as ever, she had the hide cut into super thin strips, encircling a whole hill. Yavas was of course shocked by her cleverness, but as a true king, he kept his word. The hill became the site of Carthage's citadel, known as Urusa Hill. The city of Carthage grew rapidly. Becoming a powerhouse of trade and agriculture, King Iarbas, pretty impressed with Dido's brains, even asked her to marry him, but she politely refused. Though, instead of getting mad, he went on to build a massive university. Guess he was hoping to find another woman as smart as Dido. Well, who could blame him? According to Virgil's Aeneid, Dido later met. Aeneas, the Trojan prince, and fell madly in love with him, thanks to Cupid's arrow. In this case, quite literally. But their love story didn't last. Aeneas left to fulfill his destiny in founding Rome. Heartbroken, Edo built a funeral pyre and threw herself onto it after cursing Aeneas, which, according to legend, Set the stage for the Punic Wars between Carthage and Rome. Well, quite a bit of drama there. Archaeological digs in Carthage have uncovered pottery and ruins that date back to the mid 8th century BC, supporting the idea that Dido City was founded around 814 BC, even though Carthage wasn't 
Phoenicia's first colony. It became the most important one, eventually outshining its parent city in trade and influence. The needle's legacy lasted long after her death. Coins minted in the fifth century BC were made in her honor, depicting a female figure with a Fujian cap, which some say is meant to represent Dido. Though the Carthaginians didn't leave much evidence of worshiping her as a goddess, the Romans and later writers were fascinated by her. She inspired works from authors like Ovid, Chaucer, and even Pocahontas over. Dido and Aeneas features her tragic story. Though we might not know all the details of her life, her influence on history is undeniable. She wasn't just a queen; she was a trailblazer, a leader, a woman who left a lasting mark on both her own people and the Roman Empire. Thanks for watching.